Hello, and welcome to Friday Night Games, where I'm your host, Jay Comics. Last time, we talked about Nintendo's video game origins in 1981 with a look at their arcade hit, Donkey Kong. It was the world's first introduction to the Great Ape, as well as the first appearance of the pudgy red and blue hero, Jumpman. Today, let's continue our journey by talking about and playing Nintendo's follow-up to their huge success with the sequel, Donkey Kong Jr. After such a huge success with Donkey Kong, Nintendo was feeling great and they wanted to get to work on a sequel immediately. Unfortunately for them, other companies took notice of the success of Donkey Kong, including Universal Pictures, who claimed Nintendo was infringing on the ownership of their movie, King Kong. They lost the suit after an embarrassing legal battle which revealed that Universal themselves had previously argued in another lawsuit that King Kong was in the public domain. At the same time, another, lesser-known legal dispute was going on between Nintendo and the company Ikegami Tsuchinki, which had helped program Donkey Kong under the direction of Donkey Kong's creator, Shigeru Miyamoto. Ikegami had exclusive rights to manufacture arcade boards for Donkey Kong. Nintendo initially bought 8,000 boards from Ikegami, which were changed from radar scope cabinets into Donkey Kong cabinets. After the massive success of Donkey Kong and with demand high, Nintendo of America decided to make new boards themselves, circumventing Ikegami and making an additional 80,000 units? Holy sh- This understandably enraged Ikigami, who sued the shit out of Nintendo in a legal battle that lasted nearly a decade and which Nintendo ended up losing. Probably why we don't hear as much about this one. It was during this time of Donkey Kong's success and legal tribulation, with resources thin, that Nintendo began development of Donkey Kong Jr. Wisely, they put Miyamoto on the job once again. Miyamoto had plenty of new ideas and didn't want to rehash the same damsel in distress story again. Thank God! <laughs> I bet they won't be using that tired cliche ever again. He wanted to give Donkey Kong more depth as a character and make him the protagonist of this game. But Donkey Kong was just simply too big to be a player-controlled character. So what to do? Well, do what any sequel in the 80s would do. Give Donkey Kong an annoying kid sidekick! Works every time. And thus we have Donkey Kong Jr., Donkey Kong's oft-forgotten, onesie-wearing son. You know what? I need to get a cute child sidekick! Maybe then I'd get some respect around here! Luckily, I have a fur child of my own! Miyuki, will you come be my cute little furry sidekick for my channel? Meow. Anyway, in Donkey Kong Jr., Jumpman, also known in Japan at the time as Mr. Video, was finally given a real name. Based off of Nintendo of America's landlord, Mario Segal, who had notoriously been badgering them for late payments while they were working on developing Donkey Kong, and who apparently sort of looked like Jumpman, they dubbed Jumpman officially as Mario. One of the coolest and most unique things about Donkey Kong Jr.'s story is that Miyamoto turned Mario, the hero of the last game, into the villain of the sequel. The tables were flipped and Mario was a far cry from the heroic and lovable hero we know today. After saving Pauline in the last game, Mario, the vindictive bastard that he is, cages Donkey Kong and takes it upon himself to guard the cage so that Donkey Kong can never escape. Even when Donkey Kong's young child comes to rescue his father, Mario, rather than releasing the poor ape into the wild, tries to murder the child with these horrifying things! And fucking electricity! What a dick. I love Mario as the villain. It's weird how refreshing it seems to see little Jumpman becoming the villain and Donkey Kong becoming the damsel who we sympathize with. This also makes some of the quotes from the Donkey Kong Jr. packaging very entertaining. Like how on the back of the NES box where the first line is, Mario's gone mad! And I cannot get over how the US arcade version keeps trying to surreptitiously justify Mario's abusive and unnecessary behavior by coding Donkey Kong as weirdly sexually promiscuous. After Mario saved the beautiful girl from the lustful clutches of Donkey Kong, he led the broken-hearted ape into captivity, locking him behind steel bars never again to strut his stuff before the fair maidens of the world. Watch how Junior strategically maneuvers his way to the top at high speeds, how he wrests the key away from Mario, the key that gives Papa the freedom to once again beat his chest and chase girls. What? It's just so weird and hilarious. This characterization of Donkey Kong also falls in line with many adaptations of King Kong, which make him out to be a weirdly horny gorilla with a thing for white chicks. Oh, white people and their fear of the, the others. others taking away their fantasy depictions of white women. 
As for gameplay, while Junior can jump similar to Mario, this time the name of the game is climbing. Rather than little ladders, Junior makes use of vines, poles, and chains to make his way towards the top of the stage. Overall, the gameplay is very reminiscent of Donkey Kong, but with more complex level design and more emphasis on platforming. So, with the gameplay and story completed, just one year after the release of the original Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. was unveiled to the public in 1982. I'm Donkey Kong Jr., and that's my papa. I'm trying to save him and boy, do I need your help. Like with Donkey Kong last time, I'll be playing the NES port of Donkey Kong Jr. while comparing it to the arcade version. So let's take a quick look at the NES manual before we dive into the game itself. Donkey Kong Jr. is on a mission to rescue Donkey Kong from Mario's cage. Jump from vine to vine collecting bonus fruits and avoiding lethal snap jaws. Then move on to tougher stages. Jump platforms, dodge sparks of electricity, and watch out for those birds. Use your skills to get the key that will set your pop up free. The controls work the same as in Donkey Kong. The D-pad is for movement and the A button is for jumping. As with most NES games of this time, it has Game A for beginners and Game B for experts, with an option for one or two players. Of course you play as Donkey Kong Jr. The goal of rounds 1 through 3 is to get to the top of the screen and get the key to Donkey Kong's cage from Mario. But in the fourth stage you have to get the six keys hanging from these chains to the top so you can rescue Donkey Kong and beat the game. Now for my favorite part of the manual, the characters. We've got Junior, of course, and then we have Snap Jaws, little metallic living traps with deadly jaws on them. To me, they are reminiscent of Claptrap enemies from the Donkey Kong Country series. Snap Jaws come in red and blue. Blue ones chase you down the vines once and fall off, but red ones go all over the place, even on platforms. Nitpickers are purple little birds which will throw eggs down at you as you climb up. They made an appearance in a show from the 80s called Captain N where- OH DEAR LORD! WHY DID THEY MAKE THEM LOOK LIKE THAT?! THEY WERE SO CUTE! And finally, we have the first appearance of Spark, who will chase you around hugging onto platforms. You may recognize them because they show up later in Super Mario Bros. 2. They also kind of remind me of Hotheads from Super Mario World, who act very similarly. And that's it. Wait a second! No, it's not! What about Mario? And Donkey Kong? And the other Mario? What about Jack? Yeah, he's in the game too! How could you not mention this important reoccurring character you've given me this deep connection with? This is not a complete list of characters manual. You're holding out on me. Well, I'll let it slide this time, but only because it really doesn't matter. DK Jr. moves faster going upwards by using two vines, but slow going down, while it's faster to go down with just one vine, but slow going up. There's one instance with the springboard, aka Jack, our good friend from the previous game, and if you press A at the right time, you'll jump extra high and be able to land on this platform. You also get points for touching pieces of fruit and dropping them on enemies, or jumping over them. And just like in Donkey Kong, if you get 20,000 points, you get an extra junior. Once you save dear old dad, the game loops on a harder difficulty and you can try again. All right, enough of that, let's get into the game. I just love how these NES versions added in little title screen jingles. As with Donkey Kong, the NES version of Donkey Kong Jr. has been stripped down a bit, removing the cutscenes. It's a shame because that means you don't get to see the elusive second Mario. Despite how relatively forgotten this game seems to be, it actually introduces a lot of new things to the Mario and Donkey Kong franchises that become staples. Take a look at these platforms, for instance. They sort of look like jungle trees, which makes sense because I think that's what they're actually supposed to be. But when you compare them to the platforms in Super Mario Bros, it really looks like the same kind of platform. I think it's pretty cool. This is also the first game where the Kongs become heavily associated with vines. In later games, you're always climbing up and swinging on vines. Also, there's a lot of fruit, and as we know, the Kongs love their fruit. Oh, banana. It also has the first factory level in any Donkey Kong game. I can't imagine a current Donkey Kong game without a factory level, but this was the first factory level, and it's also my favorite of the four. I've gotta say, the arcade version of this game is probably about, mm, 17 billion times harder than the NES version. I really like the NES version. It's challenging but fun, and it kind of feels like a precursor to Mario games to come. As far as gameplay, I actually prefer it just a bit to the original Donkey Kong. But god damn! I hadn't played the arcade game in a long time, so I figured it was the same as the NES. I thought, hey, I'll come on here, make a few jokes along the way, be a little silly boy, ha ha, let's all have a laugh, but no! Fuck you! You think you know Donkey Kong Jr.? Ha <laughs> ha! You audacious little piece of shit! You know nothing! 
Nothing. Fuck. But I wanted to know what the differences between the NES and arcade versions were. It took forever to beat the first level, but I finally did it. And then I was greeted to this. Look at this. What is this? Okay, let me back up. There are four levels in Donkey Kong Jr. Level 1, the jungle level. Level 2, which mixes the jungle and some industrial aspects. Then there's a small cutscene of Mario flying his copter to his hideout. Level 3, the factory. And the final level, Mario's hideout. This makes sense, right? Then why is the final level of the game showing up second? When I played the original Japanese version, the levels were in the proper order, and I was actually able to see all the levels, and it was great. But not in the English version, oh no! I had to beat the first level, then beat the final level, which is fucking hard because it's the final fucking level, only to be brought back to level 1 again. I could not get past it because it amps up the difficulty, and I've already lost all of my freaking lives! Afterwards, with my spirits crushed, thinking I'm the worst Donkey Kong Jr. player ever, I came back to the NES version, and I'm kicking ass! I'm smashing all the snap jaws, getting all the fucking points. Look at these pro strats, yo! I beat the game and I didn't even break a sweat. <sighs> Where were we? Oh yeah, so in the arcade version, when you push the keys up and beat the game, Mario tries chasing after you and Donkey Kong boots him out and he runs away. But in the superior NES version, Mario fucking dies. There's one last adaptation of this game that we're going to talk about. No, stop! Get this nonsense away from me! We're not watching the fucking cartoon adaptation, Jesus! That one is even worse than the Donkey Kong cartoon! Stupid little Junior going around with some grease lightning looking bitch, hell no! Get it out! God! We're gonna look at something that's actually worth looking at. I'm talking about Donkey Kong Junior math. Oh boy, that's right. The game so poorly sold and received that it is the only game to be released under the educational brand of NES games. Let's take a look at the manual to see if there's anything we should know before playing. Learning can be fun, especially when you play along with Donkey Kong Jr. Practice addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division by directing Jr. to select your answer. Compete with a friend in a race to solve problems in game A, or add more challenge with game B. Or practice on your own with the plus minus X d d d division symbol exercise. Recommended ages 8 and up. Alright, should be a piece of cake. Hey, not a bad opening song. All right, I'm pumped. Let's do it. So as mentioned, calculate A is beginner and calculate B is expert. Plus, minus, uh, a multiplication, division, exercise. Was there not a better name for that? Maybe calculate C? For calculate A, Papa holds up a number. Junior has to try to make the same number appear in his side window by using the numbers 1 through 9 and the symbols at the bottom. After you write an equation, the math is automatically done and the answer appears in the window. If this number isn't the same as the number Donkey Kong is holding, you can use it at the beginning of your next try and gradually zero in on the right answer. Cool, okay, let's go. Okay, Donkey Kong is holding up 83. All right, so 83. How do I get to 83? Just gotta choose one of these numbers right here. Oh god, I'm blanking. What have I done? This is a child's game. All right, J-Comics, think. How about a five? All right, I'm getting nowhere fast. Dear god, this is the worst. Okay, how about multiplication? That'll be the fastest route to 83. All right, five times what? Um, seven is a high number. Wow, okay, 35. I'm an idiot. I thought that would be higher for some reason, but obviously five times seven is 35. Come on, Jay Comics! Get it together! Okay, 35. Oh, um, I can double it. Yeah, that'll be good. Yes. Times by two, 66. Hell yeah, getting closer. All right, 66 plus nine. Okay. It's really sad how much time it's taking for me to figure this out. 
Finally, I got it! Oh, Pink Jr. was playing? I didn't know that's how it worked. Okay, so I guess the other player can just start playing at any time. Well, I'm the one who got the apple! Alright, let's do this again, I guess. 87? Didn't we just do 87? Oh wait, no, that was 83. Alright, this time I'll be smart and go with an 8 as my first number, because that's high. Multiply it by 8, 64, okay, I should have just gone with 9 by 9. Whatever, I'm in it now. Let's add 9 now. 73, cool, that's pretty close. I'll add another 9, and then 5, ha! Stupid pink bastard, you're so stupid! All right, let's do this. Feeling good. 55. Ha, easy. Let's go with, um, is there a 10 in here? No? Oh, yeah, of course not. Let's go with 9. Multiply it by 5. Everybody knows that's 45. I'm not even going to think about how there was probably a faster way. Add 5. Just got to grab a 5. I'll pass this division symbol, because when I get to the addition sign, it should replace it. I'll just grab this 4 right here, and I only need 1 left. Everyone on the internet is gonna think I'm such a stupid. Well, I may be a fucking moron, but I'm no quitter. Alright, skip this stupid minus sign and give me that fucking multiplication symbol! Alright, 12, let's see. 12 times 4 is 48, so I'll just get that and... Give me that multiplication symbol, damn it! That's 72, ha! Okay, now I just need to- Oh god! I'm trying to get 55, what have I done? Oh my god... You know what, let's just try subtracting 9. Why the fuck not? I can't do math. 63, cool. Minus 7, 56, praise me, I can do this! Minus 1, ha! Fuck you, Pink Jr., go- Alright, three apples in, I need to do another one to redeem myself, Jesus Christ. Okay, 85, what's with the 80s? Okay, it's fine, I can do this. Okay, 8 times 9, 72, cool, plus 9, that's 81. <gasps> We're close! Okay, 81, grab the plus sign, plus 4, obviously. Where is it? Oh, it's way the fuck over there. Whatever, that's all I have to get. Fuck my life! God, okay, 83 minus 3, there we go. Jesus, okay, one last round. I'll put my skills to the test. 84, all right, no fucking around. 9 times 9, 81. Oh man, I 100% could have done this every round. All I need is 3. Ha! 81 minus, wait, no. I don't need the minus, I need a plus. Okay, I'll just go over here and get this plus. Cool! Okay, 81 plus 3, got him! Plus six, yay! Oh, five apples. I'm the best. I beat the game. Ha. Fuck. You. <clears throat> well, that was an absolute travesty. No way am I gonna do Calculate B because it's the same thing but harder, and I'm sorry, but I've already lost all my pride today. I have none left to spare. <laughs> and after that horrifying display, I will save you the details of plus minus multiplication division exercise and just let you know that I suck at it too, okay? You essentially climb up and down these chains solving basic arithmetic, and overall I think it's funner than Calculate A or B. Now, despite the bad reputation of Donkey Kong Jr. Math and the fact that I'm a complete dumbass, I actually don't think this is a bad game. When I was a kid, I would have loved to play this at school, instead of just doing regular math problems. I was the type of kid who got jealous that I never got to play Mario Teaches Typing in school, so this would have been my jam. Of course, I wouldn't want to pay full price for the game, and if I got this as a kid instead of Donkey Kong Jr. to play at home, I would be disappointed. But as a learning game in school or to teach young children, or me apparently, basic math math skills, I don't think it's a bad idea. I actually like it a lot. Unfortunately, 1983, the year after the release of Donkey Kong Jr., is infamously known as the year of the North American video game crash, nearly causing the death of the US video game market. Thus, whereas Donkey Kong sold 60,000 units, Donkey Kong Jr. only sold half with 30,000. Still a success, but nowhere near that of its father. Just like Junior. But luckily, a few years later, as we know, it would be ported to the Nintendo Entertainment System where it could enjoy a second life and additional success and legacy.
Well, folks, what a journey we've had. But there you have it, Donkey Kong Jr., a fun game which improved on the original mechanics of Donkey Kong while adding in many elements to both the Mario and Donkey Kong franchises. It's my personal favorite of the original three Donkey Kong arcade games. And you can bet your bottom dollar we're going to be talking about the third one next time.